Hello, welcome to my channel and uh, checking out this video. And thank you so much for uh, uh, giving it a shot. This is a comparison of the Mesa Boogie Mark V 25 and the Mesa Boogie Rectiverb 25. Uh, they're both kind of in that similar class of amplifiers, both Mesa Boogie amplifiers. They both have some different features, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, uh, basically, I'm just going to do some, uh, some comparisons across the board with the different uh, between the two amplifier channels and the different tone settings and uh, so we'll just dig in and see how that sounds This is the Mesa Boogie pushed tone. This is the um Mark V, Fat Tone. <laughs> We'll go ahead and do the crunch tone. This is the Rectoverb Vintage Tone. Mesa Boogie Mark II C tone. <laughs> Thank you. 
five on the Mark IV setting. This is the Mesa Recoverb on the um, uh, modern setting. <laughs> This is the Mark V on the uh, extreme set. So that was a comparison between the Mark V and the Rectoverb, Rectoverb 25, both Mesa Boogie. Um, you know, uh, the, the features between the two, um, you know, you, you've got, uh, you know, I think you've got a little bit more width of tones. Um, uh, and the, the Rectoverb is probably a little easier to dial in, but to be able to use it uh, direct, um, you know, you have to use something like a torpedo. But it does give you the options of, of using... Uh, the torpedo software to be able to change out your impulse responses on the speakers, um, and the uh, the the Mark V, even though it has a, a direct out, it really only has two options, and we can take take a look at that uh, a little more in depth, maybe in another video. Um, but it's got two options between a, a closed back and a, a open back uh, speaker cabinet uh, for the uh, built-in impulse cab clone response. Uh, in, impulse response. So, um, you know, it's, it, uh, you know, as far as having an amp, tube amp that you can kind of, uh, you know, be able to go direct qu pretty quickly with minimal setup and be able to get a decent tone, um, you know, I think that's a good, uh, not a bad starting point. It just doesn't give you much flexibility in the back end. So you just kind of have to um, think about your tone as you're setting it up. And that's pretty much what you're going to be stuck with if that's what you track. Um, otherwise, you know, maybe it's better using something like a torpedo and then recording that dead track and, and then adding, uh, um, adding some, uh, additional, um, uh, you know, processing to it on the back end with, um, with, uh, you know, changing out the, the impulse responses or, or, uh, uh, even running it back through and getting more gain on it before taking it back out to, uh, to an impulse response. Um, so, uh, you know, so some folks, you know, take that approach. They try to get maybe a clean recorded track and uh, with minimal gain on it, and then it gives them the ability to add more gain later if they want to. Um, or you can try to dial in the tone that you want to begin with. Uh, it's all about really just managing your time and making best use of your time um, rather than spending just hours and hours trying to dial in tone. Um, you know, try to get a uh, predispositioned predispo, tone that you want to use 
and uh, moving forward with that. With that. But um, hopefully you like the video, and thanks for tuning in and checking out, and good luck. And be sure to check out some other videos, some music I've got up, um, and uh, 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 four different albums, a couple singles, a couple EPs, and uh, check that stuff out, and uh, hopefully you like it. And thanks for tuning in.